Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about this ancient tablet you see right here. The tablet located in a museum in Istanbul known as SI-427. And a tablet that was thoroughly discussed in the study right here that confirms something a lot of historians have been speculating for a long time. That unlike previously believed, the so-called geometry and specifically the Pythagorean theorem of the right triangle is very likely not actually from Greece. It most likely started in Babylon, approximately a thousand years before Pythagoras was even born. Which of course creates a slight problem for many different mathematics textbooks out there. And so let's talk a little bit more about this because it's a pretty interesting discovery. First of all, today we generally believe that Pythagoras was essentially the father of trigonometry, the father of mathematics when it comes to triangles. Which is something you might remember from early school as well. We're all taught that Pythagoras was the father of the right triangles and he was the one that developed the idea behind their calculations. With the famous formula right here sort of describing what he discovered. But for several years now, different historians and different archaeologists have been actually sort of discovering hints that this might have not really been true. Various hints discovered in other regions and in even more ancient empires more and more suggested that a lot of trigonometry was actually developed elsewhere. At first it was believed to be developed in Egypt, with several ancient manuscripts such as this one right here known as the Rhine Mathematical Papyrus clearly showing the signs of some sort of a primitive triangular calculation. But further evidence showed that it could have actually come from somewhere else, specifically from ancient Babylon. From the city by the same name, Babylon. Which would sort of make sense because it's also known that prior to the establishment of the Pythagorean school, Pythagoras is known to have traveled across both Egypt and Babylon, so he might have actually collected a lot of his ideas from these regions that have already been practicing geometry for approximately a thousand years. With one major exception being the fact that they didn't really have a formula for this, at least not the one that shows exactly how these triangles are formed using simple mathematics. But they had a very clear understanding of how to make these triangles using tools around you, specifically by using what's known as the Pythagorean triplets. With the most famous example being numbers 3, 4 and 5. If you were to try to create a triangle out of 3, 4, 5, it will always be a right triangle, always with a side that's going to have 90 degrees. But most recent and I guess most exciting evidence comes from this tablet right here. This interesting tablet was actually originally discovered over 100 years ago. And it seems to be approximately 3700 years old, possibly even older, and definitely predates Pythagoras by approximately a thousand years. And something in this tablet suggests that ancient Babylonians were clearly using these right triangles for various purposes. But first here it's important to understand what Babylon was and what sort of issues they were dealing with. Because remember, Pythagoras lived during a very interesting time in ancient Greece and his school for the most part was a kind of a place to explore things both philosophically and religiously. Many of his ideas, even though they were quite useful, were not necessarily used for practical purposes. Obviously some were, but many weren't. So the actual needs of ancient Greece were very different from the needs of ancient Babylon. First of all, Babylon or Babylonian Empire were actually two separate entities at two different times. There was the old empire and then there was the new empire. The new empire was famous because of this, the ancient hanging gardens of Babylon, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. But this was the new empire, that's not actually the one we're talking about. If we were to go back in time 1200 years before that, we would actually find ourselves in what's known as the old empire. The place that used to be just a single city that then managed to conquer a lot of cities nearby and created the Babylonian Empire led by the famous Hammurabi. King Hammurabi or I guess Emperor Hammurabi was actually a pretty interesting individual. One of the most famous things he implemented was the famous Hammurabi Code. The code that you can actually still find in Louvre today and it's sort of inscribed on this beautiful sculpture. This is the first official legal document ever. And today it's believed that this actually served as the formation for a lot of other laws in the world, including the laws that eventually made their way to Torah and then to the Bible. So in some sense he was basically the creator of the legal system. But that was not the only thing he was able to create. He also established a lot of different regulations and a lot of very specific techniques on how to deal with private property. Mostly because this was essentially some of the first times in history when people started to have their own land 
have their own property and were actually able to use this for, for example, agriculture to sell products to others. So the birth of ancient trading system. And back in the days, to keep track of all of this, the Babylonians started to use a lot of clay tablets. Now, clay tablets were actually in use for thousands of years before that, but the ancient Babylonians really sort of perfected the technique. And although it's hard to establish exactly what all of the tablets were used for, the ones that have survived for thousands of years, like this one right here, seem to be really complex systems of accounting, different types of mathematical calculations, most likely related to different types of trade, and even legal complaint letters like this one right here that describe in a lot of detail how one of the merchants got potentially ripped off by another merchant. This one is known as the Complaint Tablet of Ia Nasir. And so here we have the development of what seems to be a really complex agricultural and mercantile system where pretty much all of the tablets and all of the calculations were mostly used for either record keeping, transactions or calculations. Which makes the ancient Babylonian system a very interesting culture, very practical and very to the point, but also very good at keeping track of everything that they do. And so a lot of these tablets like this one right here that were discovered in the last uh, few decades, or more like in the last hundred years or so, have also provided direct evidence that the Babylonians were using a lot of right triangles in helping them figure out how to divide someone's territory or in creating various boundaries when it came to agricultural areas. Which is exactly what the new analysis of this tablet known as SI-427 shows. It describes several Pythagorean triplets and it talks about different types of land being divided. Something that appears in the tablet several times. And something that has previously been seen in this other tablet I mentioned previously. Which in this case is believed to have been a practical use of trigonometry in essentially agriculture and in trade. Although in this particular case it also seems to be a kind of an instruction manual on how to construct these right triangles in order to then apply them to various fields or various agricultural areas that might belong to private owners. More specifically, it's also believed to possibly be details about a certain field that's actually split after Sanuit was sold to someone else. So a perfect example of private ownership in the ancient times. While also mentioning some other things like for example some sort of a tower and some sort of a marsh field that's possibly located in the area. But even though the signs of these tablets clearly indicated that something was going on there, it took a thorough investigation of both tablets by the Australian scientists behind this paper to figure out that all of this was actually connected. And specifically to realize that a lot of these right triangles were used for a lot of different agricultural purposes and to of course divide different parts of land for private ownership. Which also means that unlike Pythagoras that essentially came up with a formula to calculate any right triangle, the ancient Babylonians most likely only relied on some triangles, the ones that were useful to them. They didn't really need all of the right triangles in the world. And also as a side note, the tablet seems to mention one specific individual with the name most likely being Sin Bel Apli, who was a wealthy female landowner and who also seemed to have a problem with something on their land, possibly date palms. And because of this, this tablet was created to resolve the issue. And so this essentially was a legal document, and specifically a legal document that would apply in ancient court, especially if it came down to a battle between two wealthy individuals. But unfortunately, the ancient Babylonian Empire did not last very long. Once Hammurabi was gone, so was the empire. Yet a lot of the things he created and a lot of things developed in ancient Babylon in roughly around a few decades seem to have influenced a lot of different societies afterwards. First the Egyptians, then the Greeks, and eventually our society. And so the discoveries from these ancient clay tablets are definitely building a very different picture of the ancient world, while also presenting a completely different origin for trigonometry and for the famous Pythagorean triangles. But I'm sure there's going to be so much more to this story in the next few years. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.
And for a channel formerly known as What the Math, this is quite mathematical. It's actually something that I used to teach in class as well. Now I would have to teach it differently.